Hi, I'm Ed Charbonneau, Developer Advocate for Progress and Microsoft MVP. And today I'll be showing you how to get started with Kendo UI for Angular 2 using ASP.NET Core. Now before I get started, let's highlight some of the tools that you'll see in this video. For this application, I'll be using the command line. I'll also be using Node Package Manager, or NPM, to install dependencies and tools like Yeoman. Yeoman is a code generation tool that I'll be using to scaffold the new application. And the application will use Angular 2 for the client side and ASP.NET Core for the server side APIs. Now, since Angular 2 requires that we use TypeScript, we'll need Webpack. Webpack is a tool that will compile and bundle our JavaScript and deploy it where the application needs it. Once the app is generated, I'll use Kendo UI for Angular 2 and show you how to use the button and grid components. Throughout this demo, I'll be using Visual Studio as my primary code editor. So enough with the introductions, let's get started. So the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that you've updated to the latest version of ASP.NET Core. Next, make sure you have NPM installed and it's updated as well. Now, once you've made sure that NPM is updated, you'll need to install Yeoman. Yeoman is going to be the generation tool that we use to create the ASP.NET application. So I'm going to go to my console and install Yeoman. I'm going to type npm install dash g yo, and this will install the Yeoman generation tool. Now that Yeoman is installed, I need to actually install the Yeoman template that will be used to create the application. So back to npm, I'm going to do an install dash g yo generator dash asp.net dash spa, and this will get the asp.net JavaScript services templates that I need to create the application. Okay, now my prep work is done, and here's where things get really easy. I can just go to my console and type in yo, and I'll get a list of my yeoman generators, or I can type them in directly. In this case, I know the one I want to use. So I'm going to go to my console and type yo ASP.NET Core dash spa, and this is going to prompt me to generate a new ASP.NET Core application, and I can choose from Angular 2 and some other JavaScript front-end frameworks. In this case, we're focusing on Angular 2, so I'll choose that, and then I'll just name my application. So here we name the application, I'll just call mine K2, and when I hit enter, it'll spin up a new ASP.NET Core application. Now this application includes everything I'm going to need to build an ASP.NET Core application with Angular 2. It's installing Webpack, it's installing all the Angular 2 dependencies, and it's setting up the environment for me. You can see it's reloading dependencies and pulling packages from NuGet. Now when it's all finished, it actually initializes Webpack and compiles any TypeScript and CSS files into the application for me. Okay, Yeoman is all done, so what I want to do next is actually just run this application directly from the console. Now this isn't going to be in my normal workflow, but I want to show you that this actually works. So in my console, I'll go ahead and type .NET run and press enter, and this will spin up an instance of the application. So this just shows that the Yeoman generator has completely scaffolded out an application that I can kick off and run from the console. So I'll copy and paste that URL in my browser, and there you go, we have our first Angular 2 application running on, on ASP.NET Core. There's a couple demos in here, I have a counter component, and then I also have a demonstration to show how to fetch data from a web API endpoint. Now this web API endpoint is powered by ASP.NET Core Web API. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my console and close out this application that's running from the console. And instead of running from the console, let's open this up in Visual Studio. We'll just type explore dot, that'll bring up our Explorer window, and we just click on the xproj file, double click, and that will open up the project in Visual Studio. So now that we have the application open in Visual Studio, let's take a look at the Solution Explorer and see what was scaffolded for us. You can see that we have the normal model view controller type of thing here. We have controllers and views. We haven't created any models yet, so we don't have models. And in this application, we have another folder called client app. This is where all of the Angular 2 
client-side application development will be done. And this is the same application we ran from the console. If we wanted to run and debug this application, we could just come up here, we could click on the debug button, and this will load up the application in the browser and start the debugging process. As you can see, the application is up and running again, and we'll just leave that go for the rest of the demo. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do with this application is add Kendo UI for Angular 2. Now to do that, I need a special progress NPM registry. So I'm gonna add that through NPM as well. So back in my console, I'm gonna type in NPM login with the special registry URL, and then I'm gonna scope that to progress. When I enter this in, it's gonna ask me to log in. For the username, I'm gonna use the first half of my email address. Next, I'm gonna enter my password and then I'm gonna follow this up with my actual email address. And now you can see I'm logged in as myself and I'm scoped to progress. Now I can install NPM packages from the progress registry. So let's do that. Let's install some Kendo UI components from the progress registry. Let's start with some Angular buttons. So I'll do npm install dash s and I'll do kendo angular buttons press enter, that will fire off the installation. And then once that is done, I'm gonna go ahead and add the grid as well. So I'll just use my up arrow key and type in grid here. And that will install the Kendo UI grid. Now I have one more dependency that I need to get, and this is the theme, the Kendo UI components in my application. So back over to NPM, I'm going to install the Kendo theme default package. This is gonna add CSS files that are needed uh, for the Kendo UI components. So now I'm gonna tab back over to my project in Visual Studio and begin wiring up the Kendo UI components. The first thing I'm gonna to need to do is come over to my client app directory and open my app modules TypeScript file. And in here, I need to add references for those Kendo UI components so I can use them in my application. So I'm just gonna copy and paste these imports in here. So say import buttons module and import grids module. And then down in the import section here, I need to just add those as well. So I will type in buttons module and grid module. Now I have the Kendo UI components wired up in my project and I can use them in other components in the project. Now I still need to tell the application where to find the theme for Kendo UI. So let's do that now. We're gonna need to go to our webpack config file and there's a special one just for these type of components. So webpack config.vendor.js is where we need to go. And we need to look in this entry uh, vendors property and under this array, we're gonna add in that dependency. So it's gonna match pretty much what we typed in the console. We're gonna have Telerik Kendo theme default. We're gonna look under the distribution folder for all.css. Now, this will be compiled by Webpack and bundled in the vendor.css file. Let's take a look at that file just to find out where it is. So if we go under WW root, under distribution, you'll see the vendor CSS file. Now I'm going to open this up just to show you something because uh, this is very important. This vendor CSS file right now contains the code for Bootstrap. Now let's make sure we save everything here and it's going to ask us to save a solution file. Let's go ahead and OK that. Now that we've saved our vendor, our webpack config.vendor.js file, and we have our vendor.css open, let's go back to the console again and tell Webpack that we've added a new vendor dependency and we need to recompile that vendor CSS. So I'm gonna go and type webpack-config and call out that particular config file. And when I hit enter, this will go through a Webpack compilation and everything will get compiled and bundled and put where it needs to be. Now you can see that it's already telling us its output to vendor.css. And if I go back to Visual Studio, you'll see I got prompted. 
and it says there were unsaved changes made externally to our CSS file. So that confirms that we're rebuilding this vendor.css file. So I'm going to go ahead and OK that. So now I can close my vendor CSS file and my vendor config file and also my app modules file, and we can focus on doing some development. So let's go under the app client app folder and into components, and let's find that counter page where we click the button and it increments a counter. Let's go back and have a look at that one more time. Here it is. We're under counter, and when we click this button, we increment this count. Let's go ahead and replace this button here with a Kendo UI button. So that is the view that I'm looking at here under client app, app components, and counter.component.html is the template for that component. So I'm going to replace this generic button with a Kendo UI button. I'm going to paste that code in. You can see it's pretty much the same code, except I have Kendo button declared here, and I'm setting the primary property to true, which is going to set the color of the button to the primary color of the theme. So that should be a pink button when we go back to our web page. I'm just going to refresh. And there is our Kendo UI button. Now I want to go back to the project and let's update the fetch data example. So we're going to go into fetch data and open up the fetch data component. And in here, we're going to replace this piece of content here, which is a templated Angular 2 component. So we're using Angular 2's templating engine here to create a table and display temperature data. And we could see this page in our application under the fetch data tab. And this is what it looks like now. So we're going to replace this with a Kendo UI for Angular 2 grid that has features like sorting, editing, and paging. So the first thing I need to do is come in and just delete this section of code. And I'm going to paste in a Kendo grid. And I'm going to set the data attribute and bind that to the forecasts list, which originally was binding the template that we just saw. So I'm going to save this. And when I go back to my project, you'll notice it's already refreshed for me. And I have a nice Kendo UI grid here. And that's all I had to do. I didn't have to define all of the columns. Kendo UI was able to get that from the JSON that is being passed in through that array. So you can see that it's automatically generated these headings. And these aren't quite so user friendly. So let's go ahead and fix that next. So back over to our code in the project. I'm going to open up this Kendo grid tag and just add some more items to it. So I've got a Kendo grid column here. And I'm going to bind to the fields that are in uh, the data set and just set the titles explicitly here. Now I'm going to save this. And when I go back to my page, you see it's already refreshed for me again. And now I've simplified the heading with the explicit titles that I set in my code. So there you have it. We have Kendo UI working with Angular 2 in ASP.NET Core. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, check out telerik.com slash kendo angular dash UI or give us a tweet at Telerik on Twitter.